Hey everyone, in today's video I'll be covering everything the devs talked about in dev stream number 53. This dev stream, the main focus was on the new season that dropped today, and joining us on this dev stream was Pirate Vladimir Hinek and Philip Daniel, the head of QA. So let's just get right into this. <laughs> So the majority of the stream's focus was on the new season, which I've already dropped videos on, so I'm not going to recover here. But I will talk about the things that they said that may particularly be interesting for those of us who have heard everything about the new season, or have played the new season and gotten their hands and really know what's in it. For example, they clarified how gathering the cassettes will work. You will get the season 11 ones first from loot POIs, and then only after you've looted all of the season 11 uh, cassettes will you be able to get the season 10 ones that you didn't get last season. The game was particularly buggy today, as it always is on launch day, and these bugs did affect the devs as well, and actually forced them to restart the game sh very shortly into the stream due to one of these bugs. We learned that the new weapon changes that came with this season were the work of Sweet Tsunami and Vladimir Hinyak, great guys who made massive progress on improving the shotguns and the snipers, with Tsunami behind the snipers and Vladimir behind the shotguns. They highly encouraged feedback and thoughts regarding what you think about the reworks that came this season, and personally, I am a huge fan of these reworks, and I'm very grateful to both of these men for greatly improving our game. They stated that this is not going to be the last change and that there will be more changes moving forward, hopefully to try and get us closer to perfection. I would say really keep an eye on, if I were to take some guesses, 45 ACP and possibly we could see some changes um, with stuff like the MP5 and, and guns that just aren't used a lot. Um, so keep an eye on frequency and what's going on with that. Um, Vladimir then had a statement where he stated he wishes all guns to be competitive with each other and that AR should not dominate all rounds, really all guns should be able to dominate, um, and that really goes back more to frequency. We want to see a balanced frequency, and so does the devs, and that's really refreshing to hear, and I'm really happy to hear it. Um, a little bit more time passed where they talked about more stuff regarding the new content. Before mentioning that the night variant of the new map isn't out in the current update, um, hopefully we'll get to see it in this future. Um, if not, it's not a huge loss, it's, it is what it is. They explained that the reason behind the EWIM overhaul that came this season was actually hoping that it rewards the member of the team who does the most work and trying to eliminate that whole kill steal potential and make it so that way your score accurately reflects just how much you do in the squad and not just if you're lucky enough to get that final bullet. Um, hopefully that should make you am a bit more competitive, a bit more, you know, feeling like you earned your win rather than having it stolen by stupid things. Um, they addressed the addition of the uh, brand new game news, which will allow the dev teams in the future to notify us when events, new things, and just, you know, send notifications to us to the game. I think this is a great concept and I'm really excited to see how they use it because it means they can skip over social media and go directly to the fans of the game, which has the potential to allow for greater dev player communication, especially in Vigor where our communication is often disrupted by rumors and word of mouth, which very quickly can make wild ideas very true. Um... They also talked about the known fact that the people behind the bug fixes and the people behind the cosmetics are different people and that they can't really do each other's jobs. I've been saying this for fucking forever and I feel like this concept just whooshes over 90% of the random viewers of the dev streams. It, it, just because you don't like the cosmetics doesn't mean that has anything to do with the gun, map, or co anything else in the game. They're different people, different jobs, and it's the team that comes together to make the game. Um... She then went, had a, a statement that kind of did confuse me a little bit, I'm not going to lie. She talked about how, in her opinion, a city map wouldn't really fit the ideals of the game. Personally, I don't really agree with what she's talking about here. I think a city map is not only perfect for the game, but is also something that's been highly requested by the community. It could really show the nitty and gritty of a post-apocalyptic Norway, um, add a lot of features that you know, of Ro Norwegian architecture and cities that you're just not going to see in other games, which would make Vigor feel even more unique. Give us opportunities to get more urban combat, like pure o urban combat, which would be really fun and really unique from everything else that we've seen in the game. Um, and honestly, I, I'm really here for a city map. I, I think in a lot of, I know a lot of you are. 
Um, she stated that her reason for not liking it is that the nature aspect of vigor is very important to the game. Um, but I would raise that even in a city one can find nature, they could add, you know, small parks, some rivers, but I can understand the sentiment that she's expressing that you do got to keep yourself grounded in nature. Um, but the stream then went down due to technical difficulties, uh, a lot of technical difficulties and bug fixes uh, issues this stream. I uh, came back a little bit later, and in the chat, they discussed that the VoIP will not be added anytime soon, and that there are no plans to port the game to PC. This is not new news. This has been said on dev streams time and time again, that there's currently no plans for a PC port, and that VoIP is not something that's realistically going to be added anytime soon. Um, in the chat, HB, a fellow partner of mine, confirmed that he tested in the preview build that the cassettes are covered by insurance. It's really nice to know, and that's good information, I feel. Um, also, there is a new thing that you guys have been reporting, and I've been noticing a lot, is that rock sliding has kind of been added back in this update. Um, it feels a lot better than the bug version of rock sliding, and I'm not going to lie, I thought it was an intended feature. Um, basically, it's where going prone on a rock will make you fall down it a little bit. They confirmed it's not on purpose, and it was an accident that they're going to be working on fixing. Frankly, I don't mind this as a change. Uh, maybe it's just me, but I feel like it's a good idea to counter a lot of the rock glitch spots that have been getting progressively worse um, in being exploited over time. Just making people who try to prone on these rocks slide back down so they can't really rock peak. I feel like it's a good idea, but if it's not purposeful, I guess they should try to fix it since it is a bug. Um, next, I have some bad news for my Switch viewers. Uh, I feel like you guys are constantly getting bad news, and I'm not the bearer of good news this time either. Uh, the new Brotherhood of Soul pack, which will release with the new season, will not be coming to Switch from what I was able to gather, um, which is unfortunate. Uh, Pirate did state that they're going to be trying to get a different pack to switch, and hopefully we can hear about that in the near future. Um, finally, someone in the comment section um, brought up the concept of being able to split the cost of insurance between the different team members. You know, someone pays half, other person pays half, and the devs expressed they weren't really the biggest fan of it. Uh, they never really thought about it in the past, but they think it would, they don't really know they, they kind of seemed unsure about what they thought about it, but really it didn't sound like they were too big of a fan of the concept, which I don't blame them. I think that would just be uh, dev resources going towards something that not many people really care too much about. Um, but uh, that's the end of the dev stream. They closed out with a huge thank you. Um, thanks to the fact that this update has gotten probably the most overwhelmingly positive feedback I've seen the community give the devs on any update ever, um, which is really nice to see. Um, and uh, the devs definitely uh, express their appreciation towards uh, your guys' feedback to them. But um, that's all I got for you today on this summary. Hopefully that was everything that was covered, and um, I hope you guys enjoy Season 11, and see you all next time. Mm -hmm.